Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video we're going to continue our Corrosion and Decay series by taking a look at how you could paint some old, damp, rotten wood. For this tutorial I'm going to use one of the hanged skeleton models from the Cursed City box, but the effect would work great on any of your scenery pieces or weapon halves or shields, anything you want that really rotten old manky wood uh, effect on. So I popped out into the garden with my camera, always good to work from reference photos, and uh, took photos of a few of my neighbour's gates and some wood in the garden. So we've got a bit of inspiration to work from. Now let's get painting. Over a black undercoat, I'm going to base coat the wood using uh, a dark green-grey colour, in this case Games Workshop Scaven Blight Dinge. Now typically in the past when I've thought about painting wood and stuff, you often go straight to a brown paint and that's what you work from, but it was really valuable going out and taking a pic some pictures of uh, the various bits of wood and, and rotten timber uh, around and about, and actually trying to analyse the colours and just have a look at them and you realise it's not always just going to be a brown. Um, there's a ton of other colours in them um, and we can have a lot of fun with it. So I had a look through my paint collection, I've come up with a, a recipe I'm really really happy with. As I say, it starts with a, a base coat of this dirty grey colour. I'm applying it, as you can see, really quite dilute um, and I really don't care if a little bit of the black shows through uh, or it decolours the, the grey further. Probably going to apply two coats of this uh, consistency of paint on to work from. Over the top of this I'm going to give it a wash using a Games Workshop Snake Bite Leather Contrast Paint. I've diluted this with water, probably around 50-50. You can see immediately once we put it over we get this odd, just horrible greeny, orange, sort of brown colour I guess coming through. And I'm going to apply at least two coats of this uh, and see if I like the colour. Uh, and if I want it to be a little bit stronger then I'll apply another one. I'm just going to use a hairdryer uh, in between layers so it doesn't take forever. But nice simple technique. Slop it on and then move it around. Just make sure it's uh, resting in all those recesses as well so we're getting a little bit of that contrast in there. I'd actually done a different recipe for wood that I really liked but when I put it next to the bone that I painted in the previous video it was way too close. I didn't get enough contrast between the two things so tweaked it slightly and came up with this recipe. As you can see the second coat of snake bite leather going on here now quite drastically changes that colour. Um, these contrast paints are a very saturated, they're a very strong colour. Uh, it's why I like to apply them in a few layers because they can very quickly overtake perhaps where you wanted to go with them. And this isn't so much about bringing out loads of definition on the wood, this is very much to do with altering the colour. Now once that's dry, you can see we've got a nice sort of dirty brown, grey, green to work from. Our first highlight, we're going to use a Vallejo model colour English uniform. Now I've diluted this paint about two drops of paint to one drop of water, approximately, on my palette. I'm loading up my brush and then I'm wiping off the excess. This isn't dry brushing by any means, the, the, the paint on the brush is still wet, we're not going to get that chalky finish that we do with dry brushing. And I'm just using the edge of my brush here and trying to catch any of the grain that's sculpted into the wood. Uh, when I was practicing this scheme I actually used some scenery from the Warcry set uh, and the grain is a lot more defined on that. Uh, and then when I picked this up to start doing the video on that I realized there's a, there's a lot less of it on this model. Um, but if you just take your time, I'm putting very very little pressure on the brush here so I'm just letting it pick up. The, uh, the different surfaces, it'll work absolutely fine and you can start to get just a, a really nice looking wood already with just these three paints. Now 
can see I'm working around all the edges and I'm just catching catching any of those edges where there's an obvious break in the grain. See we've already got a nice tone there. It's really looking like sort of a gnarly old bit of wood. So our final highlight with it is going to be GW Carrack Stone. And just like I did with the English uniform before, I've thinned the paint approximately two drops of paint to one drop of water. I'm doing exactly the same process, but I'm just trying to pick out less of the wood grain this time. With these lighter paints, it's important we keep that dilution so we don't get too much of a chalky finish with them. It's not a complicated process this, and I think I'm going to use it on uh, some of that aforementioned Warcry scenery I've got. It's actually a pretty chill thing to paint. I'm also really, really excited about this whole swamp vibe that we've uh, we're hearing about with the new edition of uh, Age of Sigma. So I think uh, I think I know the direction my painting is probably going to take over the next few months. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I've been really enjoying this series of videos. Uh, so thanks very much for all the comments uh, and I will make sure that we get to a few of those things that you've asked for as well. But I think this is quite a drastic change, this last step. It really sort of silvers the wood up almost. It gives it that age. On the edge here, there, there was hardly any grain at all sculpted onto the model, so I'm just going to paint it in. So it's exactly the same mix of paint. I'm just putting in a few random sort of squiggly vertical lines. It'll work absolutely fine. Now, you could stop at this stage, absolutely. Um, you've got a nice old weathered wood. Uh, would look fantastic on on weaponry and, and uh, backs of shields, things like that, I think. And I just think it's worth stressing again that the fact that we didn't just start with a brown and, and then work from there, we, we were able to get a much more interesting looking wood. So we got this sort of grey, this orangey leather colour, this almost yellow uh, English uniform colour, and then this sort of, I don't really know, beige, I guess, um, off-white colour but we've ended up with something that I think looks pretty close um, certainly to, to some of the bits of wood that's outside my window but I would like to take this a few steps further so really damp uh, loads of moss loads of, of decay occurring so I'm going to use a couple of enamel washes this first one's uh, by Ammo by Mig and it's called Slimy Grime Dark we're just applying it neat out of the pot and I'm focusing on areas where I think the water's going to soak in and then drain down and, and accumulate. So the bottom of the, the upright here, for sure. And then up here where the, the various cross members meet, I reckon you get a build up in there. So I just worked my way around applying it to neat. Now I'm using a synthetic brush here. Uh, if you use enamels and oils and the, the corresponding thinners, with your nice sable hair brushes, it's, it's going to dry them out and, and ruin them. Uh, so I either use an old uh, sable brush that's sort of lost its lost its point, um, or say I use a synthetic one. And then once you've got it where you want it, I've just used a little bit of uh, mineral spirits. So I use uh, Winter and Newton Sansador, so odorless mineral spirits, uh, and I just blend it out slightly. So by which I mean I'm touching. Uh, the edges of the green that's closest to the rest of the wood and I'm just sort of moving my brush backwards and forwards over that area just to dilute the paint there and blend it in a little bit to the wood underneath so the green isn't as strong. You can see already um, I think it gives a really cool effect 
Um, I, I love these products. They're going to be featuring a lot uh, in stuff I'm going to be painting. Uh, next up, I'm going to grab a lighter enamel green. Now, in this case, it's Slimy Grime Light. Um, I really like the products of, of Ammo by MIG. Um, we're not sponsored by them or anything like that, but I, I really enjoy using them. Um, but, you know, the important thing here is it, it's the colours, it's the enamel washes. And with this, I'm just going to apply it in that transition area. So where I was uh, thinning the darker green out before to blend it in, I'm going to apply a bit more of this, this brighter green. Just so we get a bit of variation. And uh, just brings a lot of, ironically, I guess, life to the, to the wood. trying to represent here is a sort of build up of, of moss and of algae and that type of thing just just damp conditions so I'm very very happy with this result and as I say I think I'm going to be using it on an awful lot of stuff I'm going to be painting soon I also really fancied having a go at seeing if I could model up moss uh, and particularly the sort of Spanish moss the, the, the hanging moss that you see in swamps and stuff and I, I don't know how accurate exactly this is but I think it looks cool uh, and it was really easy to do um, so just taken some white glue or PVA glue and I've thinned it down with some water um, I don't know how much I've thinned it down probably three to one water to glue something like that just wore it down I don't think it overly matters and then I grabbed a cotton wool pad I'm sure a cotton wool ball would work just as well but I haven't got any of those I've got a load of these from uh, fire lotus so I'm going to use some of this. I'm just soaking it down in that mix. Then we're grabbing a pair of tweezers and a hobby knife and we're going to start teasing it apart and what I want to do is to create sort of strands of what will ultimately become moss. Uh, I'm doing this on a little bit of plastic card so it obviously just doesn't soak into a piece of paper if I was if I was to use that. So I'm just using a little bit of plastic card here. And you see each time I'm just teasing the wool out until I get that sort of hanging shape. I uh, hope you can see it a little bit better uh, over my glove. That's what we're looking for. And you can make as many of these as you want. I, I dried them out for about four hours and I found that was absolutely fine. I was able to paint them and work with them and, and they were spot on. They didn't stick themselves to the plastic card or anything. I was able to, to ping them off really, really easily. Um, it was a lot less messy and a lot less uh, taxing than I thought it was going to be uh, this step. This really was a, oh, do you know what? I wonder if this will work. I tried it and it did, which was great. So I applied a tiny bit of super glue here. I'm sure you could use white glue to do this as well, but I was impatient. Um, my super glue nozzle's awful, so I just used the tip of a, an old hobby blade there to apply it in the smaller area. And then I'm just gonna press these little strands of uh, cotton wool that we've got to the model. And just build them up um, as much or as little as you want. Uh, I've done a lot more on, on this one, and then I've just done uh, been a bit more sparing with the uh, the other skeleton I did in the other video, so we'll look at those in a second. So just applying them with a pair of tweezers until they're roughly sort of where I want them. And apply them both sides with this idea that they obviously they build up over the top and then they, they droop down. But for the top, I wanted to add a bit more texture. Um, so I've used uh, super glue again here, but again, you could use white glue if you, if you wanted to. Um, I'm using very, very fine sand, so chinchilla sand. Now, don't be a numpty like I am here and try and, I don't know what I was thinking, sort of scoop it on and sprinkle it on. Um, just turn it upside down and dip it in the uh, in the pot of sand. It will be a lot cleaner and you'll get more sand where you want it. Um, but you know, thought I'd leave it in. Just don't, yeah, just just don't do this. Just disgraceful. But what I wanted with this was to, to create, as you can see in this picture, a, a build up of that texture. Uh, and then I'm just grabbing the darker, the slimy grime dark, so the darker green, 
uh, and just washing this straight over that cotton wool uh, and that sand uh, once the super glue is dry. And I absolutely love the result. It, it was exactly what I was hoping it would end up to be. I use a little bit of the lighter grime over it as well, just to, just to vary it up a little. Um, but I think for the, the effort, I think the result is, is really pleasing. Um, and as I say, I, I'm definitely going to be using this on, on that scenery, uh, and I might even pop it on a few models. Um, here you can see it when it's when it's dried. So we've gone for this swampy, decayed, corroded, old, rotten, damp wood. Uh, and I am very, very happy with the results we got from it. A couple of colours, a little bit of cotton wool and glue. Really quite fun to paint as well. Uh, and it's come out yeah, be better than I expected, if I'm honest. So I've painted in the rest of it here, um, as in I've... I've done the, the rusty nails in there and I've painted a bit of parchment and whatnot but they're just exactly the same as I've done when I did the rust on the, the skeleton armor, armor and stuff like that uh, and I've painted it up on the other skeleton that I did uh, in the earlier video as well just so you can see what it's like next to the, the painted model. It's it's always nice when you, you end up with a, a model like this that is I imagine I'm going to use this in loads of games now. It's just a you know a cute little objective marker or whatever, uh, and I will paint up that other skeleton with the the shroud over his head as well. Um, I painted the the parchment on one to look a little bit more like sort of horrible skin leather or something, and then the other one a bit, bit more traditional. Um, but I hope you uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, watching the process. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did painting this thing actually. Um, as I said, I'm thoroughly enjoying this uh, Corrosion and Decay series. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at zombies soon uh, and a few of you have asked to have a look at how we would paint sort of really old uh, decayed cloth as well. So we'll be touching on those things as well. If you've watched this far, then hit that like button. And if you're not already, then subscribe as well. Make sure you don't miss out on any more of our upcoming videos. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time.